So in terms of online business specifically, mm -hmm. what do you think are some great online business tools? What are some online business tools you would recommend to persons who want to either have their own online business or have one already or maybe persons who have a store or something mm -hmm. and they want to bring on that aspect? Right. So for those of you who have products, or even your service, um, one of the main, the first things that people will go to is your website. We still have people saying that you don't need a website, but it's really the first thing, like maybe just before Facebook, that people go to look for you. And uh, websites come in all different forms and shapes. Um, it's up to you with your level of investment, but that is the first place that you can have yourself featured, your products featured in a way that your ideal clients can, you know, easily find nice what, needs. yes, what you are doing and say, hey, you know, this is something that I need. Or, you know, when they first land on your site, they know, you know, this is where I need to be right now, you know. So, a functioning website, there, for years I used um, Weebly because that is where I was at the time. I did it myself, <laughs> DIY, <laughs> for many, many years, many years. Um, this year, the end of last year, I decided to do an upgrade, so I'm now on WordPress, all right? There are so many persons that could get that done for you um, and at your different levels of investment. An online tool that I love is something called Airtable. Airtable is um, a planning um, site that you could go on it has different categories um, that you can put your different areas of your business in that you need to focus on it's like gives you reminders helps you to put things um, in a calendar form all right so I love Airtable because it's almost like a spreadsheet from you, could, you know like how you use Excel right so I love to see things analytical in that way so that works um, best for me. So I always tell people about Airtable.com. Um, for social media, um, I am a bit old-fashioned. I use the scheduling tools within the platforms to schedule my posts because, you know, I want to make sure that I have control over what is there. Um, sometimes it may not look you know, as planned as how it would in Airtable, but I know that my stuff is scheduled. So if you are on my email list, um, you know, I use MailerLite now. I used to use MailChimp, but as I said, I decided to upgrade um, MailerLite. I love, you know, their, their platform. And I also schedule within that app as well. So. And if you are not on my email list, listen, I, I have some really awesome yeah. um, emails, especially for the last two weeks or so. I already have my first two weeks scheduled because I sat and I made the time to schedule those emails. And um, yeah, you should check that out as well. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's what I use um, for Instagram. I like Planoli, um, but I also found it easier for me to... Um, post as I go in the app itself. There are a lot of um, persons online who have um, motivational platforms, whether it's YouTube, whether it's through mm -hmm. their own hosted shows. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of persons doing this kind of motivational content, business content mm -hmm. as well. Who are some people that you follow online who you really like? Well, I love Marshawn Evans Daniels because she talks about two things your faith and your business which are two things are, that are really important yeah. to me yeah. she's excellent and she's an excellent speaker yeah. so I love to follow her um, I also love to follow April Franz Hunt if you don't know April you need to get to know April she is a no-nonsense type person yeah. and if you need somebody to yeah. tell you you are on BS she will tell you you are on BS <laughs> you know and pull you up yeah. you know so I love April April has why I love her is because you can see her growth and her transition over the years to you know a status that is of excellence and you can see she does it from her heart 
you know, and most of these people, what sets you apart is your heart of service, right? It's not only about the money and what you can get, but the way you serve your audience, your clients, that is what, you know, makes me continue um, to follow them as well. Um, I love now in terms of our local space I don't know um, I love Faye and Lions like just because of how you know she exudes that mom right that wife that's for me right and that business woman type of attitude it's something that resonates with me you know so i love to follow her listen to what she says at times as well that's on the um local space so yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> what uh, would you say are what would you put as the different categories in your life and how do you kind of organize them and attend to each different category okay so first of all my first category is god <laughs> how did we know that <laughs> and you know as you said organize i i would say that that comes first right um next would be family right husband children okay and the next would of course be business and you know that's kind of how it goes like in the day for me you know because it starts off you know with that with god then i mean the kids get up husband there you know you have to deal with them as well and then most of the more than half of the rest of the day is business for me so that is kind of like how it is for right. me mm -hmm. and when you're dealing with when you're dealing with, say, your school, your children are going to school and mm -hmm. all of that, how does that, how do your day, what do your days kind of look like in terms of, do you have to drop them to school and in terms of the meal and then when they come back and where does your work fit in in terms of how your days are structured? Right. So about two years ago, I took on a day job, right, on top of all that I have I going I, on. Like, <laughs> listen, remember what I said at the beginning, where I'm like, I am oh. aware that there's so many other rungs of adulting yeah. that I have yet to reach, <laughs> and I'm just like, wow, I feel like I have a lot of things going on here, and I'm just like, I don't even. How do people? How you? How do people put a child in this? I'm just like, <laughs> I have a lot going on here, like. So, like, just put a child there, yes. woo, like, wow, and then more than one, yes. it's like, wow. Yes, 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 I, I, I took on a day job. Yeah. And the reason why I took it, because, I mean, 14 years before that, I was a full-on entrepreneur, no other source of income than what I would have worked for. I took it because I saw an opportunity to help grow and develop uh, department one that was not existent before in the company and I took it as a challenge for myself to help develop and grow that's why I decided you know okay I, I want to do this and I did it you know it was a lot of adjusting because I can't drop and say I am going to town and I have some banking to do <laughs> and come back <laughs> you know it's like you have to ask permission you know and you know the kids are sick i can't just drop and go to pick them up from school no so that was a lot of adjusting so um, my husband helps quite a lot he would be the one who would drop the kids to school um at the point in time we had one vehicle now we have two so I would take some <laughs> well, on my on my way to work. I would take them. Divide and conquer. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes and he would take some. Um, we have, you know, our relationship has grown, which was so critical in terms of getting things done. Right? If your significant other is on a different 
um, pathway yeah. in terms of what they want and you are on a different path. It can never, like, never, ever, ever work. So, you know, we had to come to a point where we said, okay, this is not working, that we need to start working together. And that, most of us had it with me asking for help, right? Um, but in terms of our relationship, we had to get back to that place. And that has made things so much easier. All right. So he would take that. I would go to work. My job is very flexible. All right. So most of the times I can do, um, if they are not listening, <laughs> my personal stuff um, while I'm there. You know, and it, it it is it's such a blessing because you know there are places you can go to work and where you can't like do that. You know, so <laughs> you can't breathe. No. You can't breathe too too many times for the minutes that they're watching you. Why did you breathe so many times? <laughs> That's extra oxygen in the room that you just took. Yes, dealing with the, the different personalities that was also an adjustment. You know, um, but. For I am so grateful for how things, I, I like to think of it as for the amount of challenges I went through, I am being blessed like triple over and beyond what I would expect for that, those years of challenges I went through. So I'm so grateful for that, you know. So I try as much as possible to cook and prep before I get to work. It doesn't always happen. All right, because most times I am exhausted by the time I get home. When I get home at four, I mean, we have the kids to get them ready uh, for bed, homework and stuff. If I have to cook, I cook at night and I try to cook that would last for two or three days. Yeah. Right. I have one of those husbands. They want hot food every day. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Oh, when I was talking to, I was talking to, who was I talking to yesterday, boy? Was it net? If I was talking to, or, no, no, I was talking to my neighbor. Mm -hmm. I was like, I feel like what would be perfect for me would be to marry a chef. Really? I feel like that would really, <laughs> like that would really, I think that would really check a lot of boxes that I'm trying to get covered <laughs> in life. Well, <laughs> yes, but the chef will still be working. Yeah, no. So but he would like leave I the was, food for you? Yeah, and yes. Oh, so like sometimes he'll have extra food. Or bring, it, bring it home? From wherever, yes. And then sometimes he'll make food. Like I was looking at an interview with Amy Schumer and mm. Oprah Winfrey some days ago. Mm -hmm. and she's married to a chef. Right. And she said... The people are always like, it's probably great that you're married to a chef for weeks. And she was like, yes, yes it, is. it is. He makes okay. amazing things for me all the time. And it's great. And I was like, I need that. <laughs> I need that in my life. My husband cooks twice a year. Yeah. He boasts of that. I need, Two times for the year. I need that in reverse. <laughs> in reverse. I need the husband chef. Okay. And then I need to be like, wow, Sashana in the kitchen. <laughs> Something today is hap something's happening today. It's either my birthday and she's making something for me, or like mm. somebody's coming over. Mm. Like that. So I need what you have flipped, <laughs> reversed. I, I wish the same. I wish the same. You know, and it's almost to the point where when my husband, I told you, cooks two times for the year, those two times, you should see my children. They lick their fingers like, oh my god, it's what this. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I am cooking every day. Why don't I get that? <laughs> you know, but, um, you know, we understand our rules. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so it's to do the best that you can yeah. um, for the best results. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> do you think that being an entrepreneur helps you in your role as... I actually wanted to... Well, come back. Mm -hmm. Do you think that being an entrepreneur helps you in your role as a mother... And do you think being a mother helps you in your business? Like, do you think they cross pollinate each other? I am a firm believer of, you know, your environment and the energy that you put to certain things. Being a mom, I would say, yes, it helps me in my business because I have that level of um, now structure, right? Now, let me tell you, I, will, I did not have structure in my business and that translated to not being as effective as a mom. 
and when I started working on structure that's when things started to um, be put into place now it's not perfect I am not painting a perfect picture right my husband still tells me every day structure 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 because it's so easy to fall back you know in a certain place like just as I said, if you go into the gym, you start the gym, you can start the gym three, four days and for the next seven days, it turns to two months and it turns right. to a year right. and you are like, where did the time go? Exactly. You know, consistency, like consistency structure, yeah. structure, because when you become structured, then you would know, okay, I am going to the gym at this time and it, it you follow through yeah. with it. That sets such an example for your children because... They learn now that, okay, they get up with that structure, knowing that they have to clean their room, they have to help with the dishes, whatever, and, you know, it helps them with their structure as well. So being a mom and an entrepreneur, it's such an example, and I think a good example um, for your children because it really translates to them. Now, my kids, they see me in video recording and stuff. They want to have their own channels and... <laughs> You know, we are, um, you know, I don't want them to have it at this point, yeah. right? I don't think it's necessary, all right? It's also what they, you know, see other parents doing with their kids. You know, if you look at some of those kids' YouTube channels, it's like entire families, right, online. And that's what, you know, they, they think they can have... <laughs> as well but we are taking it one day at a time because you know we live in a very digital age um but being a mom being an entrepreneur it it kind of it's like my life now and the kids understand that so that makes it a lot easier yeah and to go back to something you were saying before mm -hmm. where you said two years ago you took up a position at a company mm -hmm. is i think now and I mentioned this with Karen as well, like there's a level of, I think oh, any journey you're on, there's like a maturation. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a maturation now where persons are not being like very exclusive and split where they say, okay, you don't want to work at a company because that's you know, this, this, this. Mm -hmm. Um, or you don't want to be an entrepreneur because you want this, 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 or you want to be an entrepreneur because you don't want this. Mm -hmm. But people are, I think people are kind of opening that barrier between the two and seeing where there are pros and cons to each side. So yes. I think that's, I think that's a, I mean, I think it's a good deal. Yes. Um, you know, if you spoke to me three years ago, I would say, hey, you know, you are a mom, you need your time for yourself. You know, you can't be on a nine to five. You're missing out on so much, you know, and now being in it, having to make that change, I would say that it, it is OK. It's quite OK to have a day job. Um, you have to be happy where you are all right there are persons and jobs that i mean it's so toxic and you know i i'm not talking about that kind of environment but if you have a job it is quite okay you have to find that time to you know have that you would dedicate for your business you can you can do both don't let anybody say you can't it goes back to having that structure and your time management that would allow it to work beautifully okay i i would love to go back to being a full-on entrepreneur but i know that will come um, with its time if i am not able to manage like how i'm managing now um, i don't think i would have that level of structure um, you know if you know sometimes when you are left on your own it's easy to go back to um, old ways right but staying in a certain place for a certain time gives you a certain level of maturity yeah. and you are able now to deal with you know how to deal with things yeah. as it, especially when you're working for um, someone yeah. right so that goes for you as when, when you get to be an entrepreneur you have your own business you would know how to deal and how not to deal with your staff yeah. <laughs> what is your favorite part of what you do in terms of your business 
My favorite part is being able to share my story, to share my experiences. I, I can sit and talk, you know, for, <laughs> for the entire day on, you would not even believe some of the things, right? If we were ready to get into yeah. the deep, deep, yeah. yeah, some of the things I um, went through, right? But I love to share because I believe that it helps someone, right? Um, you know, when I was in a lower place, I don't think I could have really helped, <laughs> you know, yeah. because I was not at that um, place mentally. But now being able to share, I, ju I love like when challenges come because I look forward to the answer. And that's what I always like to share with people that every challenge or every question has an answer. So it's up to you, you have to sit, you have to figure it out, you have to try, you have to, you know, look at the different ways that you could solve um, the problem. That's why I love to talk to moms who, you know, are overwhelmed, who don't know what they should be doing, um, you know, especially for their business and with their families. I love to share from my experience. So that's the best, yeah. best part yeah. for me. <laughs> Is there like any particular success story in terms of anyone who you've worked with who really was able to like drastically change their life and just have it? in a much more, much more happiness and peaceful and effective and, and creating what they want, creating the results that they want in their life. Is there anybody you like and really stands out to you that way who you've worked with? Yes, one of my clients, Angela, she is actually not from Trinidad and Tobago, but when I spoke with her online, she was like exactly, you know, where I was like overwhelmed, so many things coming at her that she felt the pressure especially with not being able to provide for the kids as she would have wanted and you know we spoke we started with the mind right because that is where most um, that your mind has the power to shift you from one place to the next um, in a short space of time so we had to start with the mind and just like me she she had four kids but hers were twins all right so she had a one double and two, two older kill, kids right and um, when we started working she would say okay that 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 peace of mind and not having the support she started working on that and she actually wanted a job all right she was at home doing trying to do the blogging and online stuff she actually wanted a job and she needed a job and this is something that you know sometimes i i tell my my moms you know there are easy ways there are ways that people tell you it's easy to get money online when it, it's it's a lot of work and sometimes you have to be wise and said and say okay um, this is what I need at this point in time to help me to move, all right? She wanted to have a clothing business. In order to get that, she had to get um, money for capital and all of that. And instead of going the route of trying to get a loan, all right, which is something that I also don't advocate. That's from my personal experience. Um, we decided that she should start she should get a job and for a certain amount of time, at least six months a year to help her, um, you know, fund the business, right? right? And for her, I mean, stay in the States and here is two different places, you know, there are many other options yeah. um, in terms of drop shipping and all of that. And for her, she was able to get that business up and running, I think about three months, where she was able to get things to a place where she was so much more comfortable and now free to make different investments um, for herself and for her family. So I just love, I love that. Right. <laughs> so and you're still in contact of with course, her and everything? Of course. Oh, that's so cool. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. So... What so, so just to wrap up, actually, I wanted to ask you, mm -hmm. um, what is like one of the things that your family does for fun? For us now, yeah. this may sound corny, <laughs> <laughs> but we love to stay at home, like yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah, you're my future family goals, you're my future family goals. 
home. <laughs> yeah. where, where are we going today? Yeah. To your room. Yeah. <laughs> Well, There's we lots have, of fun things to do there. We have um, internet. We have things like Amazon Fire Sticks. Yeah. <laughs> that, you know, we have so much movies there. Let me sit with popcorn. Movie night. Movie at night. Home. Blankets. <laughs> your carpet. So much fun. When, when we decide to do that, if we say, okay, because we hardly go to the movies yeah, because skip of the that. traffic, skip the line. Right. Movies, yeah. food. We buy pizza, right? There's, I don't know if you know La Cantina. Yeah. Right. With that one in Tobago, beautiful pizza. We right. even had that last night. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because that's Friday night, is yeah. the night that we say, okay, family, and um, we do that for fun. This year we want to take it up a notch because, um, you know, over the years in business, travel gets put on the back burner. Um, but this year, yeah, we are focusing more on outside of Trinidad and Tobago. So okay. that will be a different level of fun. Is it one girl you have? or One girl, three boys. Three boys. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what is the, what's the sequence? Right. So my son is 14, my oldest. He's actually now in Barbados. Um, he is into athletics. So his club went to run this weekend. So I'm really proud of him for that. Um, I have a 10 year old. So intelligent, yeah. yeah he, he's like he's really good. Um, then there's Gabriella, she is now eight, <laughs> Miss Diva. <laughs> and then there's David. Oh my gosh, David! Yeah, David is the roadrunner. He is hyperactive, <laughs> Mr. Hyper. He is soon to be six. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the age: that's fourteen, funny. ten, eight, six. That's funny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so just to round out, uh, did you remember the third book? No. <laughs> <laughs> you can message me yes, after. Yes, yes, yes. But just to round out, mm -hmm. um, what are the services that people can reach out to you for mm -hmm. and how can they get in touch with you? Okay, so you can get in touch with me, all of my social media handles, Kalisha Mills. For Facebook, it's Kalisha Mills coaching all right oh, i think she's saying to look at the camera <laughs> okay <laughs> sorry <laughs> no <laughs> so yes okay so to get in contact with me you can always um go to my website kalishamills.com beautiful website no it is um, it's like yeah really, it's really nice like literally i wanted to like <laughs> I want it to clean things. It's like, I don't need this, but it looks so nice. I want to press it. Yes, yes. There you have all of my products and my services. And my feature service on that website is where I help you to handle all of the things that you can't handle for yourself as a mom entrepreneur in your online business. So we would handle all of your online work, your websites, your um, social media management, creating your content, everything for you. So you can reach out to me there. There's a button that you can click and you could schedule um, a short call with me. We will go through um, you know, what, it, what are your challenges? Where are you needing help in? and we work it from there all right for business coaching i also do one-on-one -on -one business coaching um, you can schedule on the same link for group coaching i have my mompreneur secrets membership which is a six-week um, membership program it was really great we wrapped up cycle one um, quite a few weeks ago so I'm now prepping for cycle two and that's for mom entrepreneurs and you are looking for the different ways that would help you uh, in your life and in your business so Instagram as well um, and my YouTube channel should be on stream within the next month or so Ooh, that's exciting yes. <laughs> that's really exciting yes um, so something that came to me to ask you um, about is I know a lot of persons are getting into the online space mm -hmm. and there are different ways to get income online. Mm -hmm. um, if you have a service that you offer, you know the online is kind of the channel to yeah. kind of get that for them to purchase that service. And mm -hmm. you might persons might actually deliver it online mm -hmm. as well, whether it's via mm -hmm. a video conferencing or, or what have you. But um, I know books are something as well mm -hmm. that 
uh, persons are doing online as a product, their courses as well. But I know that you have done several ebooks, mm -hmm. and I'm just wondering what process you use and what really works for you in terms of creating that, in terms of managing your time mm -hmm. to get it together, mm -hmm. and how did you determine what was what information to put in that you thought would be really useful for your audience right so the first thing that you have to do when you are even thinking about writing the book is um, who is your target audience who are you speaking to if you know who like to see who you are speaking to then writing a book is so easy it's like really easy right take for example me for moms right um, i have an ebook dedicated to moms and their time management. Um, so, what I would do, I would ask in my audience, okay, what are some of your challenges, right? If you had to do something, what what would prevent you from doing that? So, reach out to your audience, ask them what they want. They would tell you what it is they want, right? Or what challenges they have, all right? So the first thing is knowing my audience, then I ask them what they want. I use those as the key chapters for my book, all right? Um, Ebooks are quite easy to do. Um, most people know about canva.com, right? So we do the layout and everything um, for the book in Canva. Um, CC, a gun look for her on facebook as well she has so many great courses on showing you how to get an ebook done and it's from her course that i learned how to do mine so now i can write a book quickly all right um and you get your chapters done the last thing you do is to in really invest in your own stock your own photos that would make you unique because you can see something online you know hey i see this like the same image yeah. a million times, yeah. you know, that would not cause you to stand out yeah. um, with your ebook. So I suggest um, you go to create uh, creative market. Oh my gosh, I love creative market. Buy some photos, invest. I mean, it's not more than twenty dollars. Some are eight, some are five, depending on what you want. And design your book in Canva. Get it out. My last book project, like physical book, I did it with a group of um, 25 entrepreneurs from all over the world. Um, that was an experience in itself, and that book has really taken off. I spoke about in my chapter um, about networking for growth, right? Because one of the reasons I was able to grow so quickly as well because of who I was connecting myself with. And I spoke about how you can do that extensively um, in that book. It's called a growth hacking book. So, yes. Cool. <laughs> what, is, um, like a, what is a really big goal that you have for your business in the future? Mm -hmm. Well, the big goal that I have is in the immediate future is to grow my mom's night out event i had that event yes. last i feel like that's such a great um idea yeah. as an event like yeah it was really yeah. it was really good it was my first time doing it i i don't i actually don't know why i didn't do it before <laughs> i think it was fear and yeah. all of the unknowns and yeah. all of that but i did it and it felt great so i want to have it this year um, I'm actually looking at different locations because I want it to be, I know what I see out there mm -hmm. and I know what I can do and bring that is different to, um, you know, everyone else. So I want to grow my mom's night out um, event um, immediately. And after that would be international retreats. Ooh, that's exciting. Yes. Oh, that's so <laughs> exciting. Where would you yeah. have your first one? I like, love, what are some locations that you would want to have it? I love Paris. Yeah. Yeah, I love Italy. Yeah. That's Europe. so exciting. <laughs> like, I see all the retreats online and I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah. that looks so amazing. Yeah. That's yeah, most of them are in this. I mean, there are so many amazing retreats in the States, but not everyone is able 
to get to the States visa wise yeah. and all of that. Yeah. Europe has so many awesome locations and just the atmosphere, you know, is different. We are not even dealing with US, we are dealing with Euros, right. you know, so that's right. a, a different level. So, you know, I just want to bring that type of experience and mindset shift, yeah. um, especially to moms who are mostly reserved to home, like yeah. they are home and they are duster every yeah. day, you know. <laughs> I, I, yes. Even, <laughs> Even Tobago is like a nice location, you know, even though it's a, it has, it's that really calm, mm -hmm. laid back. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I suppose, I suppose there is a way to infuse the dynamism. Yes. But there is that peaceful, serene, which is kind of good too, if persons want to get that relaxing feel. Yes. And especially in the countryside in Tobago, like Charlottesville, they have so many um, retreat, eco type yeah. lodges there yeah. that is like out of this world. Oh, that's so exciting. Yeah, and, and especially on the water as well. So I'm also thinking of something on a yacht somewhere. Yeah. Tobago is lovely. Yeah. Lovely. It's so exciting. Mm -hmm. So I have to say thank you so much for coming on. Mm -hmm. um, can thank you for joining. And thank you for sharing all your tips. And thank you for my lovely gifts. I love it. I love it already. Um, and I look forward to seeing you more online. I know you're going to be, I know you're going to keep sharing lots of amazing mm -hmm. tips um, with all of us on how to grow our businesses and have thriving businesses and thriving families. families exactly. So thank you for your contribution. You're welcome. It was so, much. so great being here. Okay. Yay. Okay. Bye, guys.